Good morning, Stampers and Crafters. Welcome to Tina's Crafty Ink Spot, and thanks for joining me today. I have a fun, interactive card for you today. As you know, our new annual catalog is out. Oh, man, there's some amazing stuff this year. You know, you, you keep thinking it can't get better, but it does. Well, there was a set in this in the new catalog that I immediately knew I just had to have. Being a veteran sailor, I love anything nautical. So, Lighthouse Point. Looks kind of, yeah, okay, it's a lighthouse, no deal. Wait, it gets better. Look at this. With this amazing stamp set, you've got your, your smaller lighthouse that you can use, but you also have lighthouse die and look how big this is this is an a2 card base look at the size of that lighthouse i knew when i saw that i just had to have it and when i saw it i thought of an old technique and it's one i've done before um i'm probably sure it was probably using a lighthouse years ago but what we're going to be making today is this lighthouse card yeah it's okay it's got a little texture to ocean we brought in the waves of inspiration and got some clouds and birds eh, that's good but watch this we're gonna add the wow factor to this watch the lighthouse yes it lights up that's what we're gonna do today and you're going to see how simple it really is to make this fun card that is sure to brighten somebody's day. Okay, I really didn't mean for that pun to happen, but it. what we're going to be using today, like I said, we've got a couple little die components from Ways of Inspiration. We've got our lighthouse dies we're going to also be using these rocks yes those are rocks how cool is that we're going to use the lighthouse dies and we are also going to be using our chibatronics now these have been out a long time they're a little bit spendy but um i'm doing the card i've created is for a blog uh card swap that i joined and so i had to make 10 of these cards but you can also get, instead of just the white light, you can get uh, packages that have the colored lights and so on and so forth. I've also got a new trick or a new item that has really just kind of changed the game of making these cards for me. Now normally, you use these uh, large 3 volt batteries. Okay, those are probably... I'm going to say those are easily three quarters of an inch around. Well, when I was online um, looking to get some more lights because I needed, like I said, to do this card swap that I've got to make ten of these, I found some smaller three volt batteries. And they're thinner, which really is a game changer when you're making these because you have to be able to you know, use dimensionals and things like that. So I bought them, uh, and it was, it was A1. Okay, you're going to love this. So there's some new stuff. Now, I will put links to absolutely everything we do today, and time permitting, I'll probably type up a tutorial for it, a PDF for you below. So we've got our Chibatronics, which we've got our batteries. We've got our lights, these are just plain white ones that I have in stock. And our copper tape, this is how you uh, make the circuits. And let's jump in. Now to save some time during this video, I have already uh, die cut most of the components that we need for this. Okay, but let's do our... Um, background first and that way that can be done you know drying because remember uh one of my other tutorials i'll try to link to it um i taught you how to do these little ocean waves using your 
shimmer embossing paste. We're going to do that too because it kind of gives it that nice little rough ocean look. So let's get started. And we are going to brighten. Look at that. Brighten your day. Okay, stop playing. All right, so first off, we are going to bring in a piece of balmy blue. And this is four inches by five and a quarter. We want to create a horizon, so we're going to take a piece of masking and mask off part of our card, which, by the way, and it hasn't arrived yet, Stampin' Up! carries masking paper now. How exciting is that? And it's great priced, so I ordered some. It just hasn't arrived yet. So we're going to take a piece of masking and um, mask off a two inch section of the top of our card and a lot of times I like to cut my masking the two inches and then that way all I have to do is just line it up straight on the top edge of my card and that way I know it's straight or you can use the grid lines on your, your grid sheet so let's get our masking on there and I've got it so it hangs off the sides a little and it'll hold my paper in place. Now we're going to bring in our blending brush and this beautiful new Tahitian Tide. I love this blue. I thought Tempting Turquoise was my favorite. No, this Tahitian blue is now. So we're going to do some sponging or some blending. Let's ink up our brush and I like to go sideways, okay? Now, because this is going to be a rough ocean, don't worry if you have kind of some darker, lighter areas. That's actually going to add some really nice contrast to your card. So if I go sideways so that we have horizon lines. Now, our rock is probably going to cover most of that, but... I just kind of like to go all the way in that way. I'm guaranteed it's it's covered. So let's get this horizon nice and dark. If you don't want big blotches, don't forget tap off before you go across. Or start off of your paper. There you go. Just start off of it. Let's add a nice layer here. You'll be surprised that this card is actually pretty quick, considering all the uh, the uh, elements in it. Now it's okay if it's blotchy. Remember, I told you that's just going to add some accents to your ocean. You want to get a nice little contrasted layer so we know that it's the ocean. I want the horizon just a little bit darker because it's farther away. we pretty much got it nice there all right now we're going to do the technique i taught you on how to create kind of a, a nice little textured ocean waves and to do that we need our shimmery white embossing paste and your little plastic palette knife Now try to make sure that you leave your cat or your, you know, the seals on these or before you put the lid on, put a piece of cellophane on it and it keeps them from drying out. Well, at least for quite some time. So I'm going to stir that up a little. If your paste is a little too thick, 
Just add a dab of water in there and stir it up real nice. But we're pretty good here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the edge, the side of my palette knife, and I'm going to dip it in there. And I'm going to lay it straight down like that. Okay? And that's going to give us her horizontal lines of And it's okay if it's, you know, got a few, you know, thicker spots than others because, you know, waves aren't uniform. We don't need a lot here. We just want to add some nice contrast. All right. My rocks are down below and our lighthouse is right here. So there we go. We have got our ocean waves. That's simple. Now make sure you seal it up right away. And um, if you can't get your palette knife uh, to the sink right away, I usually just um, grab a baby wipe and wipe it off. And then but if you know, so wipe it off, and then I just kind of wrap the baby wipe around it to keep that stuff moist until I can get it to a sink to clean it. All right, while that's drying, let's go ahead and get our mask off. set that aside to dry. I'm going to wipe up some of this. I got a little bit of the masking paste on my... Oops. Alright, so we're all set there. Now, we're going to create our rock, you know, where the, the lighthouse is sitting on some rocks. So what I have here is a piece of so smoky slate, and it's about two and a half inches wide. Because that's going to be my widest spot. is about two and a half inches. So we're going to ground that. Now we're going to get the rock right here. And we're going to grab some smoky slate ink. And since this is, you don't really need the stamparatus for this. You can just put it on a block. And you can kind of tell what's the top of the rocks here. You've got a little more kind of. I don't know how to describe that. So what we're going to do, I want to mark this though. What I want to do is I want to make sure that I have at least an inch right here. Because this is where my battery and my connection is going to go to be able to light my lighthouse. So I want to have plenty of room for my battery and everything. Let me grab a measuring What did I do with my... Hmm. Okay, yeah, gotta find my... Uh... Well, maybe we can use our grid. Our grid doesn't have the measuring on it. Here we go. Let's go. So I'm gonna grab a ruler and a pencil. And I'm just gonna mark about an inch up okay just a tiny little line it doesn't have to be perfect but we want to know where our um our rock needs to the highest part that our rock needs to be so we're going to start right there on that line ink up our rocks and start there so we know that is minimum so then we know the two and a half up here is our top. Put another set of rocks there. I could have gone a little higher. And there we have our main deal. And all you're going to do is fill that in with, you know, it's okay to have some blank spots because that's going to give it texture. Or double stamp on it 
and you have your rocks. Okay, I'm gonna add a little bit in here. Okay, and then, um, you're just going to grab a pair of snips. Where's my snips? And you're just going to kind of create a jagged edge here. And you have your rocks. And then what I want you to do, save this because you can cut out the gray for your clouds out of your scrap, which I've already done. But then what I did to give my rocks some really nice texture that may not be showing in the film here. Find one of your embossing folders that has some nice texture in it. This one is retired, but it is called Bark. But find something that's got a nice 3D type, one of your 3D embossing folders. Run it through it, and you have your rocks done. Take a sponge and just sponge your edges so you don't have some real light area and you will end up with that. Let me grab my sponge and I'm going to run this through the embossing machine real quick. See how that kind of makes a difference there? Perfect. Okay, we need our smoky slate. And I need a sponge. It's been so long since I use sponges because I use my blending. And we want to do this so that one, it'll add some more dimension to it. Gets rid of that stark light line. I'm going to round this rock a little bit here. Okay, it's a jagged, rocky cliff that this, this uh, lighthouse is sitting on. How fun is that? There's your cliff. Okay, so we got our cliff, and what do we have next? So now let's assemble our lighthouse. The die set is so easy, you're going to love it. So you end up with, you have this die, you have the background die, you have the top that you can change color which I did in black and there's another tiny little die that I cut out in silver foil for the railing so what I did learn I got two of them there what I did learn when I was doing this to assemble it was this is my background piece and what I did is I cut it straight across here. Reason being, because if you leave it on there, you have red behind your uh, lighthouse portion where the light is. So we don't want that. We want our light to shine through there. So we're just going to cut it straight across. And then we're going to take and... Add some glue here. And remember, we don't need it up here because there's nothing there. So we're just going to put a little bit of glue on these stripes. I like using glue, especially for stuff like this, because you can move it once you lay it down. So we're going to line it up. It fits perfectly. I'm going to pick that up and make sure everything's lined up.
and voila look at that isn't that cool okay now let's take our top oh yeah just a little bit of glue on here a little bit goes a long way with the glue lines up perfectly in there and look at this little chrome railing how darn cute is that and I only need because the railing hangs off on the sides a little I only need a little bit of glue in the middle here probably just on the top and bottom edges And how simple was that adorable little lighthouse? So cool. Okay, let's put together our other components while we're putting components together. I have already stamped the greeting and um, fussy cut it. There is some uh, die cuts for that um, frame out these words for you if you want to use. The only reason I fuck fussy cut that was I the die cut would have taken up more of my rock and I wanted to be able to see a little more of the rock and I wanted to be able to try to put my word brighter right over the, the where I'm positioning my battery to press the light okay <coughs> pardon me so we got that let's assemble our clouds and these are from the waves of inspiration and they come with little tiny gray if you've ever wondered what those are in your uh, die set of waves and then those go on the bottom of your clouds the, the coordinating cloud size let's put a little tiny bit of glue on there and it kind of just gives your your cloud some uh, some depth line that up at the bottom of the cloud and see there see how it kind of just gives your cloud a little bit of depth it's probably not necessary but when you have a chance to add easy detail I would do it I mean alright so now we've got all our components and our background should be dry so let's start making some lights let me get this on here Oop. my bad uh, it stuck to my finger So there we've got our clouds done, we've got little birds that are die cut, we've got our greeting, and we've got our lighthouse. Now you also need, when you make your, um, when you cut your background piece, cut just a tiny little strip. Um, I don't even know what size this is. All you need is it to be enough to, um, make a little house for this tiny battery just like I said that's probably I'm gonna say that's I, I bet that's about a half inch so just a little half inch strip you don't need this much but it's a strip I had off of this all right so let's take we've got our background oh yeah nice and dry so what we need to do lay this here where it's going to be sitting then we're going to take our lighthouse and determine where that's sitting now you want to make sure you kind of 
lay it out like this because this is a big lighthouse and depending on the size of your card you want to make sure it fits on your card so I'm probably going to go about yeah about right there so what I want to do is I'm going to add some glue to the bottom of my lighthouse here we don't want it to go up into our background position my lighthouse where I want it it in place take a pencil now this is going to be so that you know where to put your electronics okay use a really light touch with your pencil because you're going to have to erase this let's mark where our hill is here because that's going to be where our battery is we're going to mark a little bit about where the sides of our lighthouse are now we want to know where that light's gonna go so I'm going to put lines on each side of the inside and then top and bottom because we kind of want to know where that little where the light's going to be so what you'll end up with is a little kind of box and you're going to know that that's where you want your light to go you know that you're clear all the way down here this right here that line right there tells you you can't go any higher than that or your battery will show and everything okay let's start on our lights so what i did do is now that we had those lines where the lighthouse is I did take my glue eraser and removed a little bit of that texture paste from right where my my uh, copper tubing or copper uh, tape is going to be. Now this copper tape is a little wide for the size of this, the um, project we're doing. So what I do is I just take my scissors and cut it right down the middle and make thin strips. So. We have two thin strips here and we want to make sure we have plenty to go the length that we're going to do so on your little lights let's see if i can find one i've got taken off okay on your little light i got stuff gluing to me here i'm going to see if i can show this i don't think the camera's going to catch it but on these little lights, you're going to see a plus mark and a minus mark. Basically, your negative is the side with the point. So if your light's going to go right here, okay, right in your little box, you got to have your tape close enough that the negative side touches and the positive side touches, okay? If it helps you to not you know be confused you can put a little negative mark here a little positive mark there okay so that you know that the, the tapes you're running here is your to your negative and this one's to your positive okay you can even draw or, you know sketch a line if that's easier for you to follow okay this on a more complex um you know design you could you know really draw it out really nice I know I need to come down and over, come down and over, and I just need to make sure that my two lines are close enough at the area of the light, and that they stay within my lighthouse, and then I've got my connections down here, because we want, remember our, um, our lighthouse is here, we want our battery behind here, and our greeting going to fit about there and I want my switch to be to where they press brighter and it lights up the lighthouse so that kind of just gives you an idea and we've got our line over here 
that we put down where our rocks end so we know we need to stay in this little area okay so first i want to do is i found these little batteries i told you i think i told you normally we used to use these great big 2032 batteries those are about maybe three quarters of an inch so they're they're pretty darn big well when i was online getting more lights yesterday i found these 1220s they're also three volt but they're uh, half the size these are probably only maybe a half inch so as you see it's going to fit in our little area perfectly so what we need to do is create a little house for our battery so i have a piece of scrap um, balmy blue and i'm going to literally just take fold this piece of paper around my battery here and trim it off okay so we have our battery house and i'm going to take my bone folder fold it make sure i have a nice crisp little fold there okay so we know we want our battery about there below our line and where our brighter sign is so what i'm going to do is i'm going to find my glue dots and i'm going to put a couple of glue dots on it glue dots on the bottom of that okay. try to pick up my glue dot here and we're going to glue our battery house down all right we don't want that moving around so i'm going to burnish it really well with my bone folder make sure i got have this fold okay now we're going to take our line and we know our light is going in this little box here so i'm going to start there and this just has the peel and peel and stick here release paper now this uh copper tape it is pretty strong and it could be a little sharp so do be careful but um it's pretty strong and easy to use so I'm going to put my negative in my box here. I'm going to come down. Sorry. Try not to twist the tape. So we'll come down. We're still behind the lighthouse area. And then when you want to make a turn, fold away. And then fold it back over itself to make a turn. So I'm going to make a turn. I'm going to make another turn. Fold it away. And then back over itself for a turn. And go on to the bottom of our battery house there. And now right where it is for the negative light, I'm going to add another strip to the outside edge of that, just a little piece, just so I have plenty of room for my light to connect, okay? So all I did is add a little piece right next to it. Now you're going to take your bone folder and you're going to burnish those down so you have a nice smooth... And I think I'm going to add one more also, just so I have plenty of contact space right where my battery is going to sit. I'm just overlapping it. Make sure I have a nice spot there for my battery to connect. Oops, I put a little snag on my paper here. 
Okay, so we've got our negative line run. Now let's run our positive. Now you want to try to do a continuous feed, a continuous line. Now you can't overlap it if you run out and redo it, but if you do a continuous line, it, it kind of helps prevent any uh, you know, shortage or you know something not connecting well. So I'm going to go right next to it. I'm not going to touch the other one. I'm going to go right next to it so that we know the negative and positive on our little light are going to touch where they need to. So I'm going to take this one down. Make sure you don't touch your other one. We'll do another turn, pulled away from itself, and back onto itself. And we've got our little housing flap here. Okay? So we're going to close it. Try not to twist my copper here. We're going to go across. We're going to go over the top of that little battery house there. Open it. And then go inside. And it finishes there. So it, see there it goes over the top. And then it's inside. Now I'm going to add another strip right next to the inside there. So we have a really good surface of, of contact. Okay, so we've got our surface of contact. I'm going to add one more to the side over here to do the same. Okay, so we have our lines. Now we know that our battery, the negative, is the kind of rough side, and the positive is the smooth side. You'll see a little plus on the top. So our negative needs to go where we ran our negative lines. Let me burnish this here, make sure we got a nice smooth move here okay let's get our little light now this one i used before we're going to see if it works okay so our negative is the little point so we're going to make sure see the little copper on the edges we want to make sure those touch the two connections there. And you're going to use your bone folder to press it down nicely. And now, if everything goes according to Hoyle, oh, I got to we're going to lay our negative side down on here. And let's close our lid and see if we have light. Okay, I really need to burnish this down. It was used. Now this has a little bit of sticky on it. It has its own adhesive. So just make sure it's down nice. Be careful. Now the little light's right in the middle there. You don't want to mess up the light. So let's make sure it's it's stuck down really well. I'm going to grab our little battery, put our negative side down. And when we close our lid, we should have light. You ready? Oops, need my battery in here. Looky there, we have our light. Okay, so now let's make sure it's working real well. There we go. Look at that. Okay. Now, I'm going to take and put a little glue dot. I'm not going to do it right on the foil because I don't want to lose any of the contact. But I'm going to go right next to it. 
to make sure my battery stays in place there. It's right over that copper. I'm going to make sure our little battery stays in place there. And when we close our lid, we have light. Look at that. Okay, so let's build its little housing. So and the idea of the housing is you don't want this top piece touching all the time. Uh, just keep the light on. So you want to make it to where it has to be pushed on to make contact there. Okay? So I'm going to use, we're going to use our um, foam adhesive strips. These are just the right thickness to lit, come above the thickness of the battery. Do I have a battery that's, our battery is just a hair thinner than these. So it's going to work perfect to keep our house lit up in, unless it's pushed. What I'm going to do, is I'm going to make some little pieces here. And we're going to take and put them around our battery. Kind of helps make sure your battery stays in place too, so that it doesn't go flopping around when you, you know, mail your card or something. Okay, I can make these a little smaller so they're harder to use, huh? But you get the idea of what I'm doing here. Now I forgot that I added a bottom piece on my little house here, but let me make sure. I might need to lift it just a tad up, but we're going to see. We just want to make sure it doesn't stay constant contact. Okay, we've got our little house. Let's make sure. Still get light. Look at there. Okay, now I'm going to peel off our, our adhesive protector. At least I think I am. I think I can. I think I can. I think I can. Yay. Alright. using such tiny little pieces. One more. There we go. Now we're going to close our battery door we just need to make sure it doesn't light up unless it's pushed on. So I'm going to fold it over. Okay, so let's fold it over. It's held in place. And then when we push it, we have our light. Okay? If your um, light stays on all the time, all you have to do is just add a little bit thicker layer of your um, foam dimensional just to keep it up so it won't you know light the light unless it's pushed on okay now we're going to take some more foam adhesive we're going to go right down the middle of these two because that's where our lighthouse is we have along the bottom a 
I like to make sure I have plenty of dimensionals for this part, just to make sure we stay together good. And we already know where our line is. We'll be erasing those. So I'll put a little piece there. Oh, I didn't, didn't cut that very well. Okay, now I'm not positive how high my rock goes here. Let me see where we're at. What I can do is just put it on here. I like to go right up against the edges. Let's add some along this. Okay, now when I'm doing um, adhesive dimensionals or strips, I think I showed you the trick I used to make sure I have a little bit of, of forgiven, forgiveness um, in making sure I get it on there straight. So let's peel all of our... Oh! Before I forget, let me get my eraser. Where is my good eraser? Okay. When I'm erasing on anything, any of my art progress, uh, I use a polymer eraser. They're very gentle and they're very good. And I'm just going to erase those pencil marks so that um, I just stuck my sleeve right in that. Just so they don't show. So I'm going to take my little eraser here and make sure I get those off. I mean, most of it's going to be behind the stuff, but I just want to make sure I don't have pencil marks showing. Okay, so let's finish removing our protective backings. And then... What I do to give myself just a little bit of forgiveness is I take and I add just a little bit of glue onto those stri uh, adhesive strips. That way when I lay it down, if I have to move it a little, I can. I'm going to do them on this one too so that I'm sure to get it squared up right where it needs to be. Just a real thin line is all you need. So we're going to line it up on the bottom and the corner. Make sure we're in peace. We want to make sure our light works. Look at there, our light works. Woohoo! Have a little bit of my uh, there, and now we need a little piece. I forgot to put a little tiny piece uh, behind the top up there. I'm just gonna grab a mini dimensional. I think I have one here. Let's grab a mini dimensional and put it back there. And looky there, you guys. What? Isn't that cool? It's so cool. Okay, so let's finish putting our card together. We have a, a Knight of Navy card base. I need my bone folder. I really like my folds to be nice and crisp. So we're just going to attach this straight down. Sure you have all your edges and your corners. Line it up on 
Our card base is four and a quarter by five and a half, a standard A2 card base. I am going to get our greeting and I'm going to attach that with some dimensionals. Oops. And we have a runner. Okay, let's put this on. I'm going to make sure I have plenty of dimensionals on here so it's a solid push because we want it to be, it's going to be being pushed on. So that might seem like this is overkill, but it, you know, you just want it really secured on there and a nice solid area that can be pushed for the light. Okay, there's our brighter right there. Wow, oh, look at that. Okay, I did miss a dimensional, right? Did I? No, we got it. Okay, look at that. I do need a dimensional right there. It seems to be right where I'm pushing. I didn't. Oh, well, maybe I did. Oh, I didn't. Okay, let me sneak a dimensional in there because it's the. You, maybe what you should do is uh, on your greeting, do the thick basic white instead of just the basic white, because this is going to be being pushed on. So I'm going to tuck another dimensional in there. There we go. There we go. Yeah, right there. Okay, look at that. Whoa, how fun is that? Let's add some birds and some clouds. I'm going to grab my little cloud. Add a dimensional. I'm going to tuck it just a little bit under my lighthouse here. Our other cloud. In this a fun card, you guys, it's really not that hard. I mean, like I said, I'm making ten of these for a card swap. I'll put this one about how about about there. I'm gonna take our little birds. And I'm just going to glue those straight down. And a little touch of glue. I'll put this guy farther in the background. I will put links to all the supplies we use today. And um, I'll see what I I should be able to find the links where I got my Chibatronics. I'm pretty sure you can go to Chibatronics.com and get supplies or you can get them on Amazon like I do. I do Amazon because I get it like the next day. I'm, I'm bad. I'm an Amazon whore. I love that. Look at our card today, you guys. It is sure to really make somebody smile. Shines brighter than you know. I really hope you enjoyed today's tutorial, and I hope you have a very happy Stampin' Day, and thanks for coming by. Bye-bye.